Hey there! Welcome to my fourth tutorial on making cams uh, using parametric constraints. So you can see I've made an eccentric, a pair, and a hex cam. I am now going to make a snail cam. Um, this one is a little bit strange in how it comes together. So um, I handed out my students a um, sort of a snapshot of what we're going to be creating. We're going to be creating two construction line concentric circles and three points around that around those two circles. Um, and then we're going to use the arc tool to create the two arcs. So in order to do this sort of easily, um, having those um, formulas that I'm going to be typing in are, is helpful. Otherwise, just follow along as I type. So uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and make a new design. Uh, I am going to create a sketch. I'm going to select the plane parallel to the top. And then just like all the other cams that I made, I want to be using uh, define parameters. So I'm going to come up here to modify. I am going to click on change parameters. In the user parameters, I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to call it D for diameter or distance. And I'm going to give it an initial value of 2. And then I'm going to hit OK. And OK. Now, before I start drawing circles, I want to make sure over here that I have selected the construction line type. So it's really important. Um, it makes your life a whole lot easier at the beginning, because what we're really doing is just setting up a whole bunch of helper lines that we're going to use to make the rest of this. So I'm going to come up here and click on construction. It turns blue. And now when I start drawing circles, these circles will be um, dashed on the outside, meaning I can't extrude them. They're just there to help me. So starting at the center point, I am going to make my initial circle um, a diameter of D. And then, so that makes it two inches. I'm going to zoom in here. So we're going to be doing a lot in these little circles here. And I'm going to make another circle right inside of it. Starting on the center point, I'm going to make this one D divided by 2, so half the distance. And now I have two circles, one that's 2 inches, one that's 1 inches that I used a parameter to create. So they're, And they're dashed on the outside, meaning I've used construction lines. Now I'm going to create some points. Um, I'm going to create a couple of them that are really easy. So I'm going to come up here, hit Create, and I'm going to hit Point. Um, and I'm going to zoom in, and the first point I'm going to make, um, if you start hovering over the um, origin and then drag up, you will see that it gives you a, um, a dashed line, and then it automatically X's when it gets to the edge of that circle. And I'm going to do the same thing here. It's uh, Fusion's way of saying, oh, you mean to draw it over the origin, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And there's my second one. Now, the third point I'm going to put somewhere over here. So I've dragged it over the origin, made it sideways, so it's over here. But I'm not measuring it in any way. I'm just dropping it down there. The fourth one, same thing, somewhere down here. And then the last one, again, somewhere over here. OK. So now you can see that the, th the three points that I drew last are not black, meaning that they aren't constrained. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape, and then come up here, and I'm going to hit Dimension. And um, I'm going to explain that what I want is for this point to, I want these points to gradually get closer to from the outer circle to the inner circle. So if this point is 100% of the outer circle, and this point is 100% of the inner circle, um, I basically want to go from 100%, I want this guy to be about 75% of the way towards the outer circle. I want this guy to be about 50% of the way towards the outer circle. And I want this guy to be about 25% of the way between the inner and the outer circle. And I can do that using a formula. So I am going to start by clicking. I've got dimension highlighted up here. I'm going to start by clicking in the center of my circle, and then on my point, and I'm going to drag up. And I know that um, the distance from the center of the circle to the inner circle is the D divided by 4, because that's the radius of the inner circle. So I'm going to start there. 
So I'm going to put parentheses D slash 4 parentheses. But then I want to add on to it a distance of 3 quarters of that next distance, which is also D divided by 4. So I'm going to put, so there's a plus sign. Now parentheses, point zero point seven five times, which is the asterisk key or little star key, D slash 4 parentheses. If you're one of my students, you have this as a picture um, in front of you in your notebook, and you can just type that in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and it makes that um, point the correct distance. Now, you may notice it's still not black, and that's because I also need to apply the horizontal vertical constraint, constraint between that and this, and now it turns into a black point. Then I'm going to go back to dimension, and I'm going to now distance this guy. So click from here to here, drag it over a little, little click, and then we're going to enter our next formula, which is parenthesis D divided by 4, close parenthesis, plus parenthesis, this time 0 0.5, half the distance, asterisk or star times d divided by 4 and then close the parenthesis and hit enter. And again to make this guy fully constrained I come up to the horizontal vertical constraint I click on the origin I click on the point and then it is fully lined up. One more dimension over here I am going to click on my origin I'm gonna click on this point I'm going to drag up, click, and my formula for this is parenthesis D divided by 4, close parenthesis, plus new parenthesis, 0 0.25 quarter times, which is star, D divided by 4, close the parentheses, hit enter. And then again, to make this guy um, a fully constrained, I have to go back up to the horizontal vertical constraint, click on the origin, click on the point, and it is fully constrained. And then I can hit escape. All right, so we have just made a whole bunch of helper stuff and we've yet to draw an actual line. But we're ready to start drawing lines and it goes together really quick now. But before we do that, make sure that you come over here and under line type, unclick construction because the next things that we're going to draw are going to be actual um, lines that we're going to draw. So construction is not selected. It is not blue. Then I'm going to come up here and select three point arc. So arc, three point. Three point arc says, tell me where you want to start. Tell me where you want to end, which is going to be so in case you weren't following along, the where I'm starting is on the outside of the outer circle. Where I'm going to end for this first one is the one below the origin. And then where you want the middle part to be. So then I'm going to drag it over to this third point and I get that lovely thing. Pretty good. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I've got three point arcs still selected, but this time I'm going to select the bottom point. So point one to the same one below the origin, point two. And then I'm going to drag it over here to point three. Voila, now we have that kind of swirly snail shape. There's just one last thing that I have to do, which is to create a line from, this is the drop part of the snail cam, so the straight line from here to here. Voila. So the outside of our cam is finished. Don't forget, we have to add a hole that the axle is gonna fit in. So I'm gonna create a circle centered on the origin, make it 0 0.25 and hit enter. And then when I finish my sketch, you can see that that blue area is what I am going to extrude. So I click on extrude, I click over here and I make the distance 3 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, and I hit OK. And then when I look at it from an angle, you can see I have a lovely snail cam. So don't forget to save it. 
So you can either hit the Save button or File Save. Make sure you're in your Automata IED folder and then type snail cam and save. And that's it. We now have all four of the possible cams that we could be using in our Automata. Thanks so much.